What is happening, people? It is Brian Alzer with NeverSay.com, and today we're going to be doing a Q&A for the month of April. And yes, I know it is May, so that math doesn't really work out, but never been that good at math. But what I do have is a little bit of time, so I'm going to try to get through as many questions as I possibly can. Now, if I do not answer your question, there could be a couple reasons why. Number one, maybe I just ran out of time. Number two, maybe it was too specific. So if you ask me how much protein a 160 pound male that is from Brazil should get for a balking routine in an eight week period, I'm not gonna answer that. That is not gonna help a large enough amount of people. So I'm sorry, I'm just not gonna answer that question. And number three, what was number three? Number three would be that maybe I just didn't like the question either. It was something that I was not comfortable sharing about myself with the world right now, or it did not pertain to a big enough audience that I didn't think would help a lot of people. So I probably left those out as well. Now, as always, I will give you answers to your questions. They may not be the right answers. Most likely they're probably the wrong answers, but you're going to get some answers. Let's go. All right. So Lord Migus, M G I S said, based on your long experience, could you please discuss the difference between healthy and unhealthy pain from your training and the balance, the latter, whenever it pops up on a bad lift. Okay. There should never be bad pain. Now, a lot of people who first get involved in the sport consider delayed onset muscle soreness. So you might be very, very sore. All right. Muscle soreness is different than pain. Yes, it hurts, but it is different than bad pain. So feeling like you got hit by a truck or you have the flu or you just have a lot of muscle soreness, that is a good thing. That probably means that you are moving in the correct direction and you're doing a lot of things that you should be doing. However, if you are getting a burning sensation in your muscles or a sharp pain somewhere on your body, I would tell you you should probably stop and especially look out for any sort of numbness, especially in your toes and in your fingers, just in your extremities. That typically leads to some sort of spine issue, which could have to do with bulging discs or herniated discs. If you're feeling any of that, I would probably recommend that you go to the doctor. But if you are doing things correctly and you're making smart choices, it is a really tough line to walk because the difference between making gains and not making any progress at all, we're talking about millimeters here. So micro tears of the muscle means that the muscle has to grow, it has to get stronger, it has to adapt to the stress that you're putting upon it, as opposed to macro tears, which is literally talking about microscopic type of difference. And when that happens, then you need to take six weeks off or go get surgery or go to the hospital. And that is not good. So if you're just talking about being sore, that is a great thing. I would highly recommend that you do that. That will get better over time. But if you're getting burning pain, sharp pain, or some sort of numbness in your extremities, then I would tell you that it's time to go get checked out. Don't let that be part of your training. All right. So Steph Beth, Steph Beth, Good name. You asked, what are your top five barbell exercises for building strength and size in the sport of strongman? So you just said in the sport of strongman. So these answers are going to be very specific to the sport of strongman. And we're talking about just barbell exercises. So my answers were very different for a power lifter or somebody like that, but honestly, not that much. So number one is going to be deadlifts, all variations, all kinds of deadlift is the king of exercise. You should absolutely be doing that. Number two is going to be the front squat. Now the back squat is terrific, especially for power lifters, but for the demands that are going to be placed upon you in strong man, your posture, your chain is going to need to be super strong. Your quads are going to need to be super strong and your core is going to have to be super strong And the front squat will help with all of that. Now, number three, I would probably throw in some sort of walking barbell lunge, not dumbbell lunge, barbell lunge, where the bar is on your back. And we're talking about going heavy for a long distance. That unilateral leg work will not only build up your lower body strength, but it will also build up your hip flexors and your core, which is going to become insanely important for carries like yoke carry, sandbag, keg, all those things. Your hip flexors become massively important and the walking lunge with a barbell is going to help you on that. The fourth exercise I'd choose would probably be the clean and jerk or some variation of that. Something where you're taking a weight from the ground, you're getting it up to the front rack position and you're putting it above your head because you were always asked to do that in strongman. And if you have a weak press, which happens to a lot of people at their early stages of competition, a lot of people have a weak press and they end up zeroing that event. So maybe they would have podiumed, but instead they're going home with nothing and it all has to do with that press. So you need to build up your upper body. I would not worry too much about bench. You still need to worry about bench, but not to the same extent that you need to worry about your overhead press for strongman. Again, this is for strongman. 
And then number five, number five is gonna be a tie. Like we said, if you had a barbell and you're talking about strongman movements, rows, you guys know how much I love the barbell row. Also, Zercher lifts, whether it be Zercher squat or Zercher deadlift or Zercher carry, a Zercher anything is going to help. I also really like the chain yoke. So if you have a barbell and you have some way to suspend some weights from it, the chain yoke is going to do a ton for you. And good mornings. I love good mornings. I know a lot of people cannot do them correctly, but honestly, for bang for buck, good mornings are one of the best exercises for the deadlift, for the squat. It does amazing things for you as long as you do it correctly. So if you are going to do them, I would tell you, take some time, learn the technique. Do not mess up because if you mess up, you're gonna get hurt. But if you do them correctly, they are a huge asset to your lifting. So there you go, Steph, Beth, I hope that helps. All right, Prince of Sains asks, I don't know if this was covered anywhere, but what recovery methods do you use? If you just look down to the next line of videos, there is a video called recovery. That's a clue. In that video, I talk about a lot of the recovery methods that I personally use for longevity in the sport and so that I don't feel like such a beat up old man all the time. I do hope that helps you out. And Prince Roland asks, what implements are best to use if you want to prioritize explosiveness and power over maximal strength? So you said implement, so I'm going to infer that you were talking about strongman movements. If you were not talking about strongman movements, I would tell you doing band work on a dynamic day, one maximum effort day and one dynamic day will definitely help build up your power and explosiveness output. I also think that in part of a dynamic workout, you should be doing some sort of throws, some sort of jumping and some sort of animal walks every single warm up, dynamic warm up, start incorporating that either into your warm ups or as part of your conditioning, but those are going to do amazing things for building up that explosiveness and bar speed and everything else. Now, if you were talking about just implements, strongman implements for building explosiveness, I'd probably say three things. Number one is gonna be the Atlas Stone because you cannot muscle an Atlas Stone. You need to be explosive with it. Otherwise, that thing doesn't go anywhere. So stone to shoulder or stone over bar or stone do anything with a stone and you need to be explosive and your technique needs to be spot on. Number two is gonna be tire flips, especially higher, heavier tire flips. I know a lot of people have access to tires at their gym, but if you actually weigh those tires, they probably weigh like 300 pounds, and a 300 pound tire is not a tire flip. That is more of a bicep curl. You wanna be looking probably somewhere between 500 and 800 pounds for your tire, because that is going to require you to be as explosive as possible, because if you do not fight that tire the entire way up and move it quickly, then it's kind of like wrestling an alligator. It is gonna turn around and bite you and you will end up on the ground in a lot of pain. So, Atlas stones, tire flips, and the third thing would be the log cleaning press. So, even though you watch people at like Worlds, a uh, World Strongest Man doing the log cleaning press, and a lot of times it looks like it's moving slowly up their chest, almost like they're just rolling it up, that is just the bar speed. Do not confuse bar speed with intention. They are trying to move that log as explosively as possible and it is just so awful heavy that that is the speed that they came up with. But doing a log clean and press is going to definitely build up your explosiveness and your power output. Number one, with the clean, you need to be explosive. It is a completely different thing. It shouldn't even be called a clean. It should be called a log getter upper thing because it's not. It's nothing like a traditional clean. It's completely different. And then the press is going to be some sort of jerk or split jerk or a push press, but you're going to have to use your entire body to get that log from the ground to above your head. So those would be my three answers for implements for building explosiveness and power. Thank you. All right, next question. Chan Darby asks, what sort of music, if any, do you play in your gym during your training? So Here's an interesting thing about me. I am not extrinsically motivated. So it could be the most amazing music ever. I'm not gonna lift any better. It could be the worst music ever for lifting. And I'm not gonna lift any better. It does not affect me like that. Crowds don't affect me. External things don't really affect how I lift. I know a lot of people need to listen to songs about people slaying kittens in order to get pumped up enough to do a deadlift. All that I need to do is go inside my head, Follow my cues, do my job. That's what I do. I have an innate sort of intensity that's been built over years and years of being able to flip that switch and turn it on. And I'm actually going to do an entire video about being able to flip that switch during competition. 
Uh, so be looking out for that. That's gonna answer that question a little bit more. But typically when I'm working out, I just allow whoever else is in the gym, they put on their music, whatever is playing in the background, it is nothing more than background to me. So I don't really have an answer to that. And you also asked, what are some of my favorite movies? I really like epic movies like Braveheart and Gladiator and Lord of the Rings, those types of big adventure, one man standing against the rebellion, those huge things. I've never seen Star Wars, not once. I've not seen one Star Wars movie in my entire life. I know a lot of people are probably gonna hate on that, uh, but just think about that because that means that I can actually watch them in order once they are all out, which I will probably do because I hear it as a terrific story, but I like those big epic small man fighting against the huge power type of things. Those things get me going. Um, I also like interesting movies like Lucky Number Slevin or Memento. Um, things that make you think, like Inception, a lot of like Brian Nolan kind of stuff or Christopher Nolan, I don't, Nolan, whoever Nolan that is, I, I don't know. I'm not a movie guy. But I like movies like that that make you think and they kind of twist the, your perceptions on their head and make you see things from a different point of view than you normally would. I watch a ton of documentaries. Most stuff that I watch on TV is real life stuff. It, it's not that much fiction, but when it is, like I said, it's either epic stuff or mind bending types of things. Oh, and before I forget, I love cheesy nostalgic movies. Things like Bloodsport and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, Conan movies, things, things from the 80s, things from the 90s, things that I grew up on that make me feel like there's still magic in the world, you know what I mean? Uh, so I love those sorts of movies a lot. If they're on, I have a tough time not watching Roadhouse or something ridiculous like that if I'm flipping through the channels and it comes on. So I like a lot of nostalgic, cheesy stuff like that, that a lot of these viewers that are watching this have no idea what I'm talking about. But trust me, you're growing up at the wrong time. We had amazing movies when I was growing up. So I hope that answers your questions, man. All right, Mike Alif asks, if you were on death row, what would your last meal be? Glass, because screw them. But real answer, it would probably be a burrito wrapped in a pizza that is the size of Wisconsin. Yep, that'd be it. All right, Matt Levy asks, what do you think about an older person starting strongman? Example, a 50 year old man starting in strongman. I absolutely love to see older individuals get involved in this game. So quick story, uh, one of the guys who was a founding member, he was the very first member ever to Never Say Athletics. Uh, his name is Dave and when he signed up, I think Dave was like 48, 49 maybe. And he had lifted in his life, but never that seriously. Uh, probably like a 365 deadlift. I think he had done a powerlift competition or a bench competition. He had done some lifting. He was a semi-experienced guy, right? And he came in, let's just say it was 49, and he came in with the goals of deadlifting 500 pounds, clean and pressing 225, uh, benching 300, I think squatting 405. And again, starting that late in the game and uh, was able to accomplish just about all those things within his first year. Now, the thing that I will say about older lifters is a lot of older people are very set in their ways and they think that they have the world figured out and no one's gonna tell them anything and there's nothing new to learn. Dave is the exact opposite. Number one, he is the most positive, inspirational guy ever. He has nothing but good things that come out of his mouth and his actions, the way he lives his life is absolutely inspiring. I hope to one day be as cool as he is. Um, and number two, he works. He is a workhorse. He doesn't care that he's older. He doesn't care what anyone else is doing. He literally goes in, he puts in the work, he does the time, and he just gets it done. I, I'm absolutely amazed by what he's been able to accomplish. He's actually gonna be one of the lifters, uh, kind of like I did that last Zabi video. Um, I want to talk about older individuals getting involved in lifting and in strongman, and I'm gonna interview Dave because of being an older individual. By the time that he was 50, he had accomplished all those things. And that is just such an amazing feat, and it really takes a lot of excuses away from a lot of other people. So I am gonna have him on and do an interview so that you guys can just experience him and his positivity and let him share his story with you guys. And also my dad, who has never lifted a weight in his entire life, same guy that I was telling stories about earlier, never lifted a weight in his entire life, but he has done manual labor because he was a construction worker his entire life. So he's got a certain amount of old man strength built up. And he is 64 years old currently, uh, just got a knee replacement about two months ago, complete knee replacement. Um, 
and got done with physical therapy, needed to continue with the physical therapy, doing something, so we decided to come to my gym and start lifting. He came in and I think the first time that he deadlifted, it was probably around like 225, and here he is probably two months later, this morning, he deadlifted 425 pounds. So he's getting the other knee operated on on the 31st of May, and uh, he's hoping to hit 500 pounds before then. So he's six, four years old, just getting started in the game. He's not listening to what anyone else has to say or what any other 64 year olds believe is the right or wrong choice for their lives. He's doing what he wants to do. He's feeling good about himself. I am super proud of him. And he's out deadlifting people literally half his age, a quarter of his age. He is a super strong individual and I am amazed by him. So if you are 50 years old and you want to get involved with a strong man, do it. The only thing stopping you is you. I hope that helps, man. All right, Anthony Tran asks, what do you believe is the most important training variable? And without a doubt, it is mindset. If you can train your mind to get over a lot of the mental humps that happen not only in lifting but in life, you can write your own ticket. You need to get comfortable with being uncomfortable because if you can get past that mental hurdle, there is literally nothing physical that you cannot accomplish. Give it enough time, give it enough practice, given the right amount of coaching, given the right nutrition and rest and recovery, you can do absolutely anything physically, but you can't do anything if you are not mentally in the game. I hope that helps. All right guys, so that is the end of part one. There is gonna be a part two. I'm going to release it tomorrow because there were just too many questions. You guys came through this time, man. There were some awesome questions. I thank you guys so much. I really like questions where you guys ask me kind of something open-ended and I get to kind of riff on it for a little bit. I really, really like those a lot. So hopefully there'll be more of that coming in part two, but thank you guys so much for watching. Until I see you tomorrow morning, go out, do something amazing with your lives, keep working hard, people. Be nice to each other, and I'll see you then.